spoke with two people who survived the Luby's massacre. They went through their own healing process physically and emotionally during a time when this violent act was unheard of, both hoping to never see something so devastating strike the country again. Move and he reached down uh, and he stuck the, the barrel, that nine millimeter, against the back of my head right there. And just as he pushed, I literally said my last prayer and I thought I was dead. It all began shortly before one o'clock this afternoon. It has been an incredible day for Central Texas. I kept on shooting, just, just kept randomly. on shooting. October 16th, 1991, a time before mass shootings were so commonplace in America. Guy was an absolute murderer. Pastor Kirby Lack and his friend, veterinarian Michael Griffith, met for lunch at the Lubies in Colleen. Griffith and Lack were discussing life and death. Griffith was telling Lack he was afraid no one would attend his funeral one day. Uh, but I looked at him and said, Mike, I love you. You're my friend. I'll be there. And I mean, that was the last words we said to each other. Seconds later, George Hennard of Belton drove his truck through the front of the restaurant. Unsure of what was happening, Lack ran over to help the injured. He crawled out of the truck, and when he looked at me, he just came up and pointed. Um, I started moving before he shot, so he missed me. What followed was 12 minutes of mayhem. The shooter circled the cafeteria three times, grabbing people from under tables and shooting them point blank. While Lack and his friends tried to figure out a plan, Susanna Hupp and her parents sat across the room in shock. Her father rushed the gunman, giving his life to try and save others. My dad broke away from my grasp and ran at the man. So he saw my dad coming and he simply turned and, and shot him. Um, my dad went down in the aisle between me and the gunman. Someone inside threw a chair through a window, allowing many to escape, including Susanna. But her mother stayed behind to be with her husband of 47 years. Uh, they had just had their 47th wedding anniversary and she wasn't going anywhere without him. As she cradled him and the cops began to arrive, uh, they saw the gunman walk to her and they said she looked up at him, put her head down and he pulled the trigger. And that's how they knew which one was the gunman. The shooter circled back around to where Lack and a few others were hiding, killing more people, including Lack's friend Michael. I had, I had just kind of smeared some blood on my face on the side, and I covered my face with my hand, to, hoping he would think I was dead. And he kicked me, I didn't move, and he reached down, uh, and he stuck the, the barrel, that nine millimeter, against the back of my head right there. And just as he pushed, I literally said my last prayer and I thought I was dead. But the shooter looked up, distracted by the approaching police officers and shot just off to the side of Lack's head. He shot and, you know, I mean, it was deafening. It was, uh, everything just went like a ringing noise. And uh, I lay there for a second and I opened my eyes and I thought, that jerk missed me. I mean, how do you miss? After a shootout with police, the gunman shot and killed himself. 23 people died in what was the deadliest mass shooting at the time. As a pastor, Lack turned to religion to heal, while Hupp turned to legislating. He was there to simply shoot as many people as he possibly could. Becoming a state representative, outspoken against gun control, and even writing a book about that deadly day. But with mass shootings grabbing headlines, these survivors have to see their worst day play out over and over again across America. It's heartbreaking. It, it is. Um, we need to teach our kids and we need to teach society. You can't get by with this anymore. You've got to be held responsible for your actions. And it's just not taught anymore. I used to have my boys close their eyes and say, I'd say, tell me where the exits are. How many are there and where are they? It's particularly disturbing that one of my children could easily be a, a, a part of one of those. While they aren't sure how they survived that tragic day, they say they will not live their life in fear. They will not allow the bad guys to win. Man, there's life out there. Get out there and live it. 
The Luby's massacre remains the sixth deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history. A memorial for the victims can be found outside of the Colleen Community Center. For information on Susanna Hupp's book From Luby's to Legislature or for details on Kirby Lacks Church in Coppers Cove, head over to our website that's KCENTV.com.